Hello and welcome to Silaholics Anonymous. I am Shakia. If this is your first time here and you have never viewed any of my content, I do hope that you enjoy the contents of this video and would choose to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. If you are a subscriber, thank you for the support. Welcome back. This is our first video of 2021. Um, if you follow me on Facebook, you've been a part of my like Facebook lives and YouTube lives, like all my live streams, you saw this particular image and I promised that I would come back because I put this on a cup for my son. And I said that, you know, you guys would get to see a video of how I was able to take a design that was more so like longer and make it fit for a um, 20 ounce straight tumbler straight skinny tumbler so we're going to get into that today hopefully you guys enjoy this if you're not a subscriber this will encourage you to go ahead and smash that subscribe button um so that you don't miss any of the other videos that are going to release gonna get back into doing more videos like this on the channel and not so much of like the live streams all right so be sure to hit that uh, subscribe button and the notification bell all right, let's go ahead and uh, jump over. I'm not sure why I went over there. Over here. Here we go. So this is our before and our after. I'm going to ungroup these because I forgot to make another one. So let's pull this here and here. First things first, for a skinny tumbler, you're going to make your box. For me, I use the measurements with 9.3. And my height is 8.125. Okay, those are the measurements that I use. And this is for a straight one, not a tapered tumbler. That's a totally different ball game. So as you can see, if I were to take this particular design and I were to stretch it to fit this so that, you know, I'm going to end up cropping it, I'm going to lose the part that says Chris Bosch. And the way that this is set up, I mean, I could probably have gone and taken this and then just added his name and just typed it in myself and made this part black. So that is an option as well, but I wanted to use what was here. So we're going to set this up to be able to um, make it fit the template. All right. Oh, let's undo that and move this over some. I always like to make a duplicate of my original, whether it's like just a background or whatever. I'm going to end up building this whole thing off of this. So we're going to go ahead and hold down Alt, bring this up here just to kind of have that. Now I'm going to shrink this down just a little. And my background, I'm going to fill in with the same background that is here. So we're going to go up here to our color palette at the top. Go to the, uh, the color dropper, pick that and sample this color. Then right click and send that to the back. Now, right here, don't really want, didn't really want that on uh, the cup for my son. So I'm going to take a box and put it right over that and I'm going to fill it with that same color that is right here. We're going to go back up to the color palette, hit the dropper and then sample. If you have designer edition or above, you have what's called your properties dropper. So we can click here. Do not click on the photo you're going to, or the background, you're going to click on that box that you fill with color. And then that would also fill it. And I'm going to go up here to my line tool and turn that off. Okay. So now that just covers that up. I'm going to select my box in the background. That's the next step. I'm going to right click, copy, right click, paste in front. If you are used to using keyboard shortcuts like me, you can also use your keyboard shortcuts to um, copy and paste in front because I teach those a lot. So you're probably used to doing it that way, but you can also right click for those who aren't comfortable with it yet. This is filled with that color. What you want to do is go back up to your color palette and remove the color. 
Then we're going to hold down shift, click on the background piece. Oh, I resize this. So I need a copy of this one. So before I do that, I'm going to copy. Now I'm going to hold down shift, put my mouse and let's zoom in. Put my hold down shift, put my mouse right over that red line and select that. So we're going to click on it. Now the outline is selected as well as the image of Chris Bosch. We're going to right click, I'm sorry, not right click. We're going to go over to modify, which is the icon right here. And we're going to crop. So now it's cropped down to the, um, it's cropped down to the template. I'm going to right click and paste in front this one of Chris Bosch. Just to kind of start this off, I'm going to put a box right here, kind of coming down in between the smoke. I'm going to select those two and crop it. Pull this over here. I'm going to pull it to the top. And that's probably going to be pretty good right there. Um, before I start to make my adjustments, if I want to see the placement to know if I want to make it bigger, if I want to make it smaller, I'm going to go to the color palette on the right hand side, go to where it says transparency, take that down. And this one's going to be a little bit different than the way I had it before because I left Chris actually a little bit bigger than he is on the original. In hindsight, I kind of wish I would have done this one. So let's see, I'm gonna take this up a little bit more. I want it to go behind his head some, so we're going to maybe go to about there. Don't wanna go up too high because we wanna make sure that the name doesn't get cut off by the, uh, cut off by you know, the top of the cup, so you don't want to be too high. So that's pretty good right there. I'm going to take my transparency back up. I need to now crop this back down into place. So I'm going to click on that background one. Again, I'm going to copy, paste in front, remove the fill color, hold down shift, click on the little extra piece that we cut out, Go back over to modify and crop again. So now it's right to the edge of that. Now for the next part of this, we will have to do some point editing. If you're not familiar or not comfortable with point editing, you may want to play around with it a little bit before you kind of dive into this type of setup because you'll have to really, you know, move your edit points around. So I'm going to double click to bring up my edit points. I'm going to hover my mouse over the edge and you'll see an arrow and a line. We're going to click on that. That's going to add a point. So it's kind of to the top of his head. I'm also going to come down here and add one to his like closer to the his back. And I'll add more, but I'll add them after I move this anchor or this edit point. So I just want to pull this up to where it's kind of like where I can see his face as you can see you can move this it'll technically repeat the picture so you're never really erasing anything so I'm going to come here and then I'm going to add a point right here pull this up add one there I'm going to add one here so right now I'm just adding points and moving them closer to his body just so that I know, you know, where I'm going to start to edit at. And for this one, I'm gonna bring it out to about here. Not really worried about this area because it blends in black. Now I could go in and really go along um, his jersey, but I'm not have to worry about that. I'm gonna zoom in. And on this one, we're gonna start here. Well, for all of them. Before I adjust that, I'm going to zoom back out. We're going to hold down shift, 
drag our mouse over all of these pieces in the middle. Not so much the anchor point, although this is the anchor point. So let's hold down shift and go over all these pieces in the middle, all these edit points. So you see they turn white. You're going to make that a curve. And then you're going to double click where it says corner. It's going to look like nothing changed, but it does change how the edit points move. If you would like to know more about edit points, I do have a, an academy. I'll have a dedicated class for the edit points. So be sure to check out the site for those. All right, click off so that you just release all of the edit points. We're going to double click on that again. We bring up the edit points. Let's start here. And you're just, <clears throat> excuse me, going to push, pull, drag, move it around until you get it to conform around his body. And because there is black behind him, you don't really see a separation. It's gonna look like his name is going behind him. So we're gonna pull this up to get around his ear. For this one, we're gonna pull this one down, come back around, let's add a point there, bring it in a little bit closer to his ear. And bring this out. Okay, um, on his neck area. Bring this a little bit closer, add a point. I'm gonna add one there. And then finally, this one, it jumped to smooth. So let's go back to corner and just bring this out. Doesn't have to fully be on be on his body. Now I did remove the line color and that was my mistake because it's more of an advanced. I can kind of go through it and know where it goes. I do recommend if you are new to this to leave your line color on so that you can see exactly where that line is. And if it was a situation where you need it to really conform and have it be right close to your subject, you can see that line and make the lines or the movement of the edit points more precise. Like here, I could have used this and then gone in and out, in and out of, you know, to go around and really get the shape of his shoulder, like the jersey part there. Here, I don't really have to. And that's why I was like, a lot of times I don't like to have the line color on because it'll make me feel like I had to go through this and be right close up to his body because I'm looking at that red line. But once that red line is not on there, I'll see that it really does blend in quite well. All right. And I'm gonna pull this back just a little, try and get it to where, there we go. So you can't see this much. Now my original square here is gone, but it's not gone forever. I'm gonna just drag and select over this. So I am technically selecting the brown that is, well, the, yeah, the black piece that's behind it, the Chris Bosch name that we edited, the original picture, and I'm gonna right click and send it to the back. Now my black piece is on top. We're going to highlight this, group it together, and guess what? We are ready to send this to print and sublimate it to a tumbler. So really easy steps. Um, this is more of an, a simpler way because I actually did a lot more on the original one that I did. And this one actually proves to be a lot simpler because on mine, I covered up the street ball and did some other things for that. But that's a little bit more of advanced. This one in doing this video um, proves to be a little bit simpler. Now, whatever you are doing and of course, it may not be the same image. If you want to go and search for this Chris Boss image, Bosch image to practice on and just kind of get used to using your edit points and, you know, understanding those things as far as making the background, filling it in with the color, copying and pasting in the fronts and, and things like that, you can definitely find the image like this. I just did a Google search for Chris Bosch, I think Miami Heat, and that, you know, scroll through and the pictures came up. 
and you can practice. Now, if you are doing something else, your steps may be a bit different. How you have to maneuver will be a bit different. You have to kind of analyze the picture to see what all you can or cannot make adjustments to. This is what my upcoming academy is about. It is about learning the program, learning how to analyze a design, a picture, and figure out which steps need to be taken to customize those items. Be sure to visit my website, um, excuse me, shop.sillaholicsanonymous.com or sillaholicsanonymous.com for the information on the academy, the cost, how you enroll, how does it work, all of that good jazz. You're going to get a very um, a detailed ebook and a way for you to print um, corresponding pages out to create your own notes in your own handwriting and how you would understand it. So it's going to be well worth it. It is three months long, so three months of instructional. And by the time you are done with this, you are going to know how to use Silhouette Studio top to bottom, in and out, and all that kind of good jazz. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and will give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know, you know, if you are able to redo this. If you are on Facebook, come on over to my Facebook group, Silaholics Anonymous Silhouette Help. Drop a picture in there and let me see that you are able to follow along and be able to do this as well. And um, like and follow me on Facebook, Silaholics Anonymous. I do live Q&As, live demos and things like that. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell here on Facebook. I'm sorry, here on YouTube. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one. Peace.